Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with my review of the new Quentin Tarantino film, The Hateful Eight. I just got back from seeing the special Roadshow edition of this movie. Basically, the Roadshow edition, if you guys are not aware of it, it's only opening up in a very, very selective theaters that can play the film in 70mm, which is the way Quentin Tarantino really wants you guys to see this. So if you guys have, you know, a theater like this that can project it, you know, you can look online and see the selective theaters where they have it, but it's very, very few theaters. Luckily enough, though, there was one that was not very far from where I am. So I was able to see it this way. And of course, too, with this, um, you know, the Roadshow Edition, you actually get this program, which has, you know, pictures from the movie. It has, um, you know, information about the cast and crew, so about the production. It's a very cool souvenir thing to get with this movie. And, you know, people are already, like, flipping this on eBay. You know, I've already seen a bunch of them on there, and I'm sure they're going to more, are going to continue to go up on there. But the Hateful Eight movie, like I said, this is the 70 millimeter projected version with the intermission in it. It was pretty cool to have this, like, 10 minute intermission. I believe they wanted to do that with Grindhouse, and not very few theaters did that. I don't even think they ended up having the 10 minute intermission. I, don't, can't, I can't remember for sure if they did or they didn't with that or not. But, you know, the movie is basically, though, uh, Quentin Tarantino's old school throwback to a spaghetti western and the movie was all shot like i said um 65 mill millimeter but projected in 70 millimeter shot in ultra panavision format which is a very very old format that has not been used since the 60s they went and basically panavision rescued these old lenses that they have had that have not been used since the 60s that they used to shoot this movie and it really gives us a super super wide image so probably the widest image you're ever going to see especially too being able to see it in this film format projected like this is you, you're getting the widest aspect you can of this film and it really works for the movie it you know, for the photography and everything of the setting, really great setting. The movie is basically, like I said, his take on a spaghetti western. Even Ina Marcioni did the music, who did music in some of the ultimate classic western mu movies. And his music in this was amazing. Like his pieces, they even had uh, a song, you know, that David Hess did for Last House on the Left in the movie, which I thought was really cool to hear that in this movie. And the way that Quentin Tarantino used that song really works and kind of gave it a totally different feeling. I don't know, it just really was to me I really love seeing that because you know, they used it also some of his music in Cabin Fever it was kind of more of like a kind of comedic play for a way they used the music in that this though really really worked the movie though is basically though about Kurt Russell's character who's a bounty hunter who has Jennifer Jason Lee's character uh you pretty much you know handcuffed to her the entire movie and he's trying to get to this town to end up you know he's, he's called like basically he's considered the uh bounty hunter who doesn't like to, you know, everybody that he brings in is wanted dead or alive. He doesn't want to bring them in dead. He wants to bring them in to hang. That's kind of his way of doing it. So he's trying to get her to the town. Of course, he ends up getting stuck in this terrible blizzard. Along the way, he ends up running into uh, Samuel Jackson's character who's stranded out there. His horse die. And Samuel Jackson's character kind of has to convince him to allow him to come in his stagecoach along with him. Kurt Russell is not really wanting to trust anybody because he really kind of is worried that everyone is trying to get Jennifer from Jason Lee's character and get the reward. So he's really not trusting anybody. Also runs into uh, Walter, I believe is the way you say his name is, Walter Goggins' character, who is, you know, I always think of him from The Last House on the Left, and the Sh I mean, not from The Last House on the Left, from House of a Thousand Corpses and the Sh TV show The Shield, a number of uh, other films as well. He's also an American Ultra, and he says that he's going to be the new sheriff in the town that they're trying to get to, and if you don't bring him in his carriage with him, he's going to end up having him hung for letting him die out there. Of course, though, the movie really takes place when they get to this kind of bed and breakfast type place where they have to stop over uh, and this is not spoiling anything this bed and breakfast type place where they stop over and then there they end up running into Michael Madison's character Bruce Dern's character Tim Roth and that's where the movie really picks up and uh, you know Samuel Jackson is not really trusting anybody as well neither is Kurt Russell and it's kind of like this whole thing of trying to figure out what everybody's motives and if the people in this you know this bed and breakfast really are who they say they are because they all have these kind of wild stories and all these things that they're saying and you really don't know if you can believe anything that they're saying and it's kind of trying to like you know, it's definitely a, uh, a character piece. It's not like a movie, you know, some of his movies where it's lots and lots of different settings and a whole lot of action and things like that. This is way more of a character study piece. Definitely comes across, could almost be a play because it's really, you know, it's mainly in the one setting. There's some other, other things as well, but mainly it's really one setting, which is the bed and breakfast setting. 
and it's pretty much what ends up happening there. But I thought that it was really, really well done, really great acting in this movie. I was interested, and I didn't find it boring at all. I know I, I, I can see some people seeing it as very talky because it is a very talky movie it's really a, a dialogue piece movie of but it's a you know and things with quentin tarantino's movies to me they don't really bother me when they're really dialogue piece because everybody's a really great actor and are actors in the movies so it works some people who kind of do mimic movies of his films kind of can be like Ooh. You know, it's kind of, if it's, and if someone's not a great actor and things like that, they can really stall a movie like this out. Everybody was great in this, especially Jennifer Jason Lee uh, did a great job. I can totally see why she's gotten the, uh, you know, nomination for the Golden Globe. Um, I have a feeling she might win it for this because I was, I thought I was really impressed with her. But I've been a fan of her, though, for years. You know, Single White Female, uh, you know, Faster and Jersey High. But I would definitely recommend you guys check this out. And definitely, if you can, try and see the Roadshow Edition. I thought it was really cool to have the intermission and the music at the beginning of the movie. And, you know, Eno Marcione's music in this was amazing. There was one part, too, that really had a total throwback to his stuff. It really, the whole score had a throwback. And the scenes with the wagon coach, with the horses and everything, too, some of it was reminded me of like Mark of the Devil a little bit um, but I don't know I I, I like that aspect of it because it kind of had this creepy vibe with the horses and stuff I really liked it especially the snow setting I can imagine what a burden it was to shoot in this because it was snowing the entire time but I would love to hear what you guys thought of the movie if you guys seen it if you guys are going to be seeing the 70 millimeter edition um, I think I said that's the way I'd recommend it also um, I'm curious too of what is the different scene wise I have a feeling it might have to do with some of the narration might be what's added for this edition but I'm not 100% certain on that but anyway though guys thanks again for watching and subscribing and I'll see you guys later